Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat episode 238, featuring a review of Age of Wonders 3. Now this is a the latest in a series that actually goes all the way back to 1999 in the original Age of Wonders game. And it's a game in the style of uh, the Heroes of Might and Magic, King's Bounty, uh, that sort of game. Uh, updated with modern graphics and a modern interface. So when I heard about it, I was very excited and I want to share it with you. Anyway, there's a lot to cover here, so without further ado, here is Age of Wonders 3. And here we go with a little game called Age of Wonders 3 from uh, Triumph Studios, a company from the Netherlands. This is the fourth game in this series. The original Age of Wonders game came out in two, uh, 1999. The Commonwealth spreads to all known lands, bringing the ideals of a united world where all races live in peace. Yet the Empire's harmony is threatened by rebels who fear its progress. Chief among them are the High Elves, who dream of the bygone age when they rule the world. They inspire dissidents as far north as the land of Briska. In the west, the Commonwealth extends a last offer of peace to the High Elves. Meanwhile, I will restore rightful rule to Briska province. You know, I like how this campaign story doesn't give you real clear good guys and bad guys. You know, they each have their motivations. In accordance with the General Regulations for Officers, Volume 4, Section 12, Military Records, I, Edward Portsmouth, Dreadnought Commander, make this record. As a graduate of the Imperial Dreadnought Academy for Mythomechanical Systems, I commit myself to do what is right. I pledge on my honor to fulfill my duty in the service of divine Emperor Leonus, the Commonwealth, and its free people. I vow to uphold the law of the people without regard to race, creed, heritage, or personal sentiment. I devote my mind to logic and the hard sciences. I take upon myself the ancient oaths of our founders. I am ready. Day 38 of our journey north. In the distance, I see brilliant white mountains, tainted by columns of smoke rising from a city in ruinous rebellion. Centuries past, the Commonwealth drove out the Frostlings. Like the High Elves, they used archaic claims as an excuse for backwardness and savagery. My predecessors cleared away the monsters of ice and snow and brought civilization. Still, this land is full of ancient secrets. A fanatical cult worshipping a frozen goddess has provoked an uprising. The people have cut off all tributes to the Commonwealth and razed a number of towns. Now ice encroaches over their fields, while monsters that have not been seen for generations have returned. No doubt the High Elves are behind these troubling events. One unexpected twist in this mission is my duty to guard the Emperor's niece, the Sorceress Larissa. She doesn't seem to remember me, but we were once friends when we were children. I remember long summer days in the Imperial Gardens. She and I shared secrets and dreamed of how we would serve the Empire. But now she is quiet and studious. All she will tell me is that she is searching for ancient artifacts in Briska. My mission parameters are as follows. 1. Depose anyone claiming to rule in this rebellious territory. 2. Rebuild the cities destroyed by the Marauders. 3. Protect Larissa and assist with her search. On the morrow, this Dreadnought will restore civilization to a lawless land. As you could probably tell from looking at that introduction, <laughs> The studio didn't have an unlimited budget to work with, uh, even though they, they are charging, at the moment, $40, $40 for this. It's quite steep, but uh, I think it's it's worth it. You might want to wait for a sale. <laughs> you, know, you can make up your own mind about that, I guess. But uh, I would definitely think this would be uh, well worth uh, $30, $20. At $40, it's a bit steep, in my opinion. Uh, for example, uh, you, know, you don't get the printed manual, of course. You just get this Tome of Wonders. Uh, built into the game. I guess this is better than just a PDF that you have to dig for <laughs> in the directory somewhere, but uh, again, it doesn't have those nice little touches that you really would have uh, appreciated about the original games. Just looking at the diplomacy options. If you haven't played this before, 
It uh, reminds me a lot of uh, the Heroes of Might and Magic games, King Bounty, uh, that sort of thing. You get a little bit of a civilization style town building, settlement building element, uh, but a lot of tactical combat as well. A lot of strategic, a good old turn-based combat. Now look at this, this is nice. If you back away from the map, you get this nice, uh, almost like a map you'd see in a book. One of those good old fantasy maps that they would print in Dragonlance or Tolkien. So a lot of little touches like that that I really appreciate. Okay, so let's get down to business here. I got these two settlers. I need to get some cities going so I can start building some troops and structures. And you know you know the drill. Uh, one nice thing that about this game, you can just pull up almost any, or actually all the units, and you'll see all of their special abilities, all of their uh, stats, any weaknesses they have. So there's quite a deep tactical element. Also, every unit can level up, so you got five different... Uh, options. If you get all the way to the top of the unit, they get some really cool abilities. Unfortunately, you're going to be losing a lot of your units in this game. <laughs> it's almost impossible, at least uh, for me, uh, to keep these guys alive, especially these tier one first couple of uh, tier troops. They're just very weak, as you'll see. Okay, so you can see my units in this army. All the You can have the armies out by themselves. Uh, they'll just vote for a leader among their, among themselves, but you're better off having them tied to a leader. The leaders have certain benefits that they bestow upon all of their followers. Plus, you want your uh, heroes to level up too. And your heroes in this game can actually fight as well as cast spells. So it's kind of cool if you're coming at this from uh, the Heroes series. And so in this particular campaign, I've got some uh, hostile. Uh, civs or hostile uh, kingdoms I have to take over. Also, I have a couple of heroes that I have to keep alive. And uh, of course, with these campaigns, as you go through them, uh, you'll learn more about the the background story. I'm not really going to be focused on the story here. I don't think anybody plays these games uh, for that element, but it's there. A lot of lore, a lot of details and flavor text. Okay, so here's my. Research, another element that's familiar to you if you played the Civ games, you'll be always learning new skills. And there's different kinds of skills. There's empire upgrades. Uh, there are, you can research spells to cast on the battlefield. There's summoning spells. And all the different kinds of classes have different kinds of spells. And if you really wanted to, you can create your own characters and decide what uh, you want them to specialize in. So quite a bit of customization. I've played several, several scenarios and games with friends and it's always been a little bit different the spells that you can learn uh, and it does make a, it makes a big difference on the gameplay and your strategies so this guy has a summoning spell already uh, so it's going to take a while to build troops in your cities so these summoning spells are cool so you can basically just spend some mana points instead of uh, turns or instead of gold uh, to get these uh, troops built so it's going to in one turn I'll have another uh, creature that I could put in an army. And another cool thing about summoning cr summon creatures is you can just uh, automatically put them in your army. They don't have to travel. Uh, so there'll, there'll be some trade-offs, but that's a pretty cool thing, especially here at the beginning. Now at the, across the top of the screen you see I've got gold, uh, there's coins obviously, then I have my mana there, and then my research, level of research. You have to really keep an eye on the, the mana and the gold. You'll run out of those pretty quickly. All right, so there were some ruins here. And instead of having to uh, just start from scratch, I can actually just have my settler repair that those ruins there. I think that'll give him a little bit of a head start, hopefully. And uh, when you place your cities, you want to put them next to these resources, like the windmill and the gold mine. Uh, as you'll see, once the city gets built, it'll have a radius of control around it, a, a domain. And the stuff that falls within that domain, I'll get perks from it, or bonuses. Uh, and every time the city grows a population level, it'll expand that radius out. So, it's pretty cool. You just have to put a little thought into the, where you want to put the cities. Now, one of the dis disadvantages of this map, actually, is that I'm playing humans and they dislike Arctic conditions. <laughs> and guess what I've got all around me? <laughs> Arctic conditions! Uh, there are some spells I can get uh, to do something about that later. But it's just going to put you at a disadvantage. 
Uh, there's just uh, just so much detail. You could really dive into this and really get good and nerdy with uh, you know what you build and where you build. And when you get into combat, uh, you'll see uh, just this much attention to detail. There's uh, quite a bit here. I mean, just the heroes alone. There's so many different upgrade options for them. Okay, so I've got my outpost rebuilding there. Let's go ahead and end the turn. It's pretty good about letting you... Uh, it'll give you a warning if you've got some troops that you haven't moved yet, so... You don't have to, to stress out about, you know, did I move all my troops? I'll give you a little warning for that. Okay, so this is my throne city. You can see in my race are humans. It's got barracks and a builder's hall in it already. Uh, that's quite nice. You have to build certain structures before you'll be able to build certain kinds of troops. And there's also structures you can build to give your troops upgrades. Um, usually, though, it takes so many turns to build the things. Uh, you probably won't get into that stuff until later in the game. What I found is that you really need to start building up an army first thing. Uh, if you wait around and build all those other buildings, uh, then sooner or later somebody's going to come over and attack your city. I don't know if it's going to do it on the campaign, but when we played the, we've been playing these scenarios, and very frequently we've lost our first city. Like I got my city undefended there. I have to play the scenarios. Sometimes these random uh, independents, I think they call them, basically the barbarians, just pop over and take your city. Uh, so that's kind of a pain, and then you take it back. You have to go through a big. You lose a couple of turns absorbing it and all that, so. A word to the wise, uh, keep a couple of troops back to defend your, your cities. Okay, here's my second placement. Go ahead and start that city. Now, you notice there's some uh, monsters up there guarding that resource. I'll have to try to take that out, take those guys out, if I want to uh, be able to harvest that. Okay, so let's uh, see if I can get some army. I'll see what this guy's got. I need to take that city on the right, but unfortunately I just do not have the troops necessary to do that yet. So you just have to be patient. Getting all kinds of quests here. That's pretty cool. Alright, so now i got my second city there. I need to do something about that. Those guards on that mana, mana pool. Okay, so this army is uh, not the best. I could build some barracks. Go ahead and build some barracks, I guess, and see if I can get some better troops. You have infantry troops. Those are your melee guys, heavily armored. Uh, you also have uh, archers. You have irregulars, which are kind of a combination of both. Uh, usually not very good. And then later on you get pikemen, cavalrymen, and monsters, and all the different races, or maybe it's uh, classes. <laughs> anyway, one of those will they have their own special troops, too. Okay, so that says very likely victory. Now let's just look and see what happens with the auto combat. Uh, as you'll see, the auto combat just really blows. I'm going to go ahead and save this before I do this, because it will probably either kill me, or I'll lose a lot of troops. So look at this, auto combat. So I lost one unit of uh, longswordsmen. Eh, not too bad, but I think I can do a lot better with the manual combat. You know, and really and truly, uh, you know, if you're doing the auto combat, I don't even really know why you'd play this game. You know, you can use that for just little quick and dirty battles, but... Uh, I mean, a lot... For me, the big fun of the game comes from these manual combats. Unfortunately... Uh, this gets quite tedious on multiplayer if you have everybody keeps uh, doing the manual combats because all you can do is just basically freezes the game and makes you watch them, makes you watch their battle. Uh, believe me, that gets old pretty quick. These battles take some time, even if you try to speed it up. So basically, what the, the short of it is, the, the multiplayer is going to be not as good as the single player because you'll probably be on auto combat. All right, just want to study the opposition first. You can click on them and see what powers they've got. See if they got a ranged attack. What kind of little nasty surprises they might have waiting for you. You really have to put a lot of thought into each battle in this game. It's uh, even the ones that are easy. 
it's also easy to, to lose some troops unnecessarily, so. Uh, you can easily spend uh, up to an hour sometimes in these battles, just very, you know, weighing each decision carefully. So look at all the, all the abilities and weaknesses that these uh, guys have, and it's just lots and lots of stuff you have to consider. Okay, so you can see there those different color tiles represent, or hexes represent the, where I can move. Now these guys uh, are long swordsmen, so they don't have any kind of ranged attack. Now ideally, you'll set yourself up so that you can flank attack or hit somebody from the rear. It's a little easier to do with the cavalry because they can move out further. But right, you get some pretty nice bonuses for that. You also take penalties if you're too far away and you try to shoot some arrows at them. Or if they have, uh, some of the creatures have first strike, so they can actually kill you before you get a chance to attack them, even if you attack, so. A uh, cool thing about that little drone I've got there, they, if they kill that thing, it actually explodes, and it'll do a lot of damage to everybody within one hex of it. So it's a great little suicide, <laughs> suicide maneuver. <laughs> Just send that guy right into the middle. Hopefully they'll attack him, and uh, while they're busy with that, and getting exploded, I'll be back there setting up my archers. You can, it even takes cover into consideration, so if you're behind cover and they're trying to shoot you with arrows, they'll take a penalty for being out of their line of sight. So just all kinds of little uh, strategic elements. So there's my hero, and as you can see, she can cast spells. She's also got a ranged attack, melee attack, and they're Always mounted so you get extra movement. However, if they kill her, it's probably game over. And this, sometimes you can hire a hero, and if they die, you just lose the hero. Uh, in these campaigns, though, if it says you have to keep the hero alive, if you let her die, <laughs> it's game over. However, if, you're, if your main guy dies, he'll just uh, take three or four turns, and then he'll resurrect back in your home city. But that kind of sucks too, because the whole time that's going on, you can't cast any spells or uh, do any research. So, unfortunately, you probably won't be able to avoid it. Sometimes, uh, you know, it, to me, it's almost like the game is just too random. <laughs> you know, it's probably fair, but damn, I just don't know how many times I would be doing really well in a battle, and then just out of nowhere, some troop would get uh, a really nice roll and kill my hero. You know, don't necessarily... I guess you could just keep reloading and reloading, but uh, that gets a little old after a while. <laughs> and if you're trying to play it on multiplayer, they're probably not going to like that very much. So basically, you just have to get used to this game. It's, it's, it's got a pretty high uh, frustration level at times. You're, you're going to be cursing a lot. Uh, there's going to be things happen that's, that's going to piss you off. <laughs> you know, so what can I say? <laughs> Uh, definitely doesn't mind crushing your, your ego and, and pissing you off. On a positive note, though, I mean, you can see the, the graphics look just beautiful for this game. It really adds a lot to it. And it's a lot of variety in the battlegrounds and in the, in the world map. And it's very aesthetically pleasing throughout. Uh, the music is pretty good, too. None of the tracks uh, really stand out to me, but... Uh, it's well done. All right, just finishing up the battle here. Now, if you hover over the enemy before you click, I suggest you do that. Uh, it'll tell you how much damage you can do, and it's worth checking out the different troops or checking out the different enemies to see you can do the most damage to. So that guy's almost dead, but he's still a threat as long as he's alive. All right, so there we go. Got that. Uh, that one troop got promoted, so he should get some extra benefits from that. So he's got a little metal on him up there. Also got control of the mana resource. So you can see I'll be bringing in more mana now, which is always cool. Cast more spells on the battlefield and summon more critters, too. So definitely worth it. Now that little tent city over there is pretty cool. If I can get to that, then they'll send refugees to my city, give it a nice population boost. Go ahead and try to fill these guys out. Unfortunately, about all I can make at this point of the game is <laughs> cannon fodder. <laughs> oh, there we go. 
That boosted up my city population as well. You definitely like to have uh, the bigger cities, the better. This is a couple of wargs. Fortunately, I, uh, there's no rats to kill. It's always a downer. I love to make a big army of rats. About the closest they've got are goblins. You can make kobolds. Do, they, do those count as rats? Rat-like. Okay, very likely victory. Now, believe me, if I clicked on auto combat, there's a good chance I might actually die. <laughs> you can't trust that very likely. And if it ever says closely matched, forget about it. You will always die. <laughs> You'll be crushed. Okay, it looks like I, there's probably no way I'm going to be able to avoid losing some of my units. That one guy's almost dead already. Now, what you can do is try to retreat him. If you get the chance to move out, I can try to get him off the battlefield and that way. You know, as long as they got a little sliver of health left, they can they can heal up. So let's try to get him out of there. And there's no undo command here, so you really have to be careful where you click. Again, talking about that frustration level, man. There's been many times these battles I've just clicked the wrong thing and accidentally melee attacked instead of ranged attack, something like that. Just sent my hero right in the middle of all the all the armies and I had to replay the whole battle you know, that's pretty I need to be pretty aggravating especially if the you know it's a big battle that takes a while and as you can see once you get later in when you get into these big sieges with cities and multiple armies yeah it, it can get quite time-consuming so just be careful where you click All right so I'm trying to spread out a little bit take some advantage of uh, some flanking Obviously, I don't have my cavalry yet, but they're really good because you can circle around using their movement points to get around the bad guys. The AI is, pre is, is decent. Sometimes they'll do stupid things, uh, especially once we get to the city siege. You'll notice that they sometimes just <laughs> run. They got all these nice walls and archers, but for some reason they will run outside the gate and be mowed down. And other than that, they're pretty tough. Oh, shit. They blew up my flying sperm before it got to them. Oh, these guys are shooting me with poison darts. But not a lot of little nasty abilities these monsters will have. These are just the basic grunts at this point. <laughs> Way to get a little later in the game and you have to start fighting these level 3, level 4 monsters. Also, I just love the change in scenery there. So before we had that nice little grassland we were fighting on. Now we've got this Minnesota. That's what it looks like outside my apartment right now, actually. Doesn't really ice doesn't really thaw out until the middle of August. All right, got some pretty good maneuvers going on here. Although I think I can't imagine a worse place for my uh, irregulars to be or archers to be. I was able to take out the opposition though. Pretty cool. Those guys, level them up. Oh, yeah. Now that is how you do it. All right, one last set of... Oh, come on. <laughs> Look at that. You see, that's what I'm talking about. I just had that really lucky roll and ended up taking out my unit. If, I, if I'd have just had a little sliver left, I could have healed him back up. But no. <laughs> no, has to kill him. That means I'll have to waste some more turns making more troops in the city, so... Uh... And there's that troop that I was able to retreat. He's out of movement points, but at least he's still alive. Heal him back up and live to fight another day. Love the little detail that they put into these this map as well. You can say what you like about the game, but the artists are definitely top-notch. Oh no, <laughs> Yeti! <laughs> oh, Yeti, Yeti, Yeti. Remember those early Doctor Who episodes with the Yeti? Okay, go ahead and put my battering ram. Now, the, this, the human, or at least this guy, the Dreadnought, is really good with machines. Later on, they can make some really powerful cannons and things like that. Machines, they don't heal up like the other troops do, but they don't take as much damage either. They tend to be really good uh, to send out first. Nice little buffer. There's a little outpost. 
The outpost will extend your domain, but they uh, they don't produce anything. But nevertheless, it's important that I take it out. And let's see what to research next. There's another empire upgrade. I think I'll go ahead and take that. Don't have a lot of mana coming in. I should probably focus on finding uh, mana generators. And that's another thing, you, another factor when you're deciding where to put your cities or what to conquer next is uh, what resources do you need. So man, you got to be thinking two or three different levels at all times as you play this. That sort of big picture stuff, little picture stuff. All kinds of constantly making decision after decision. Very likely victory. <laughs> and let's see if we can kill these Yeti without losing an army. There's my cool little battering ram. Look at that thing, man. It's that thing looks awesome. I lived in something like that for years in college. Okay. Obviously the Yeti or the what I had to worry about here. Now, if you play a druid, you can actually take over these animal troops sometimes. You have these mind control spells. Okay, this, this is going to be tricky because there's uh, some trees and stuff in the way. It's kind of hard to see the paths. Alright, looks like I'll just have to take a range penalty. That reduced the damage I was able to do, but... Any damage is better than none. Let's see if I can flank these guys around. So it looks like a pretty good battle I got going here, but I think I'll skip ahead a little bit because we're almost at the 30 minute mark and I really wanted to show you one of the, the bigger battles. That's where it really starts to get fun. So I'm going to go ahead and skip, skip to a bigger siege. Right, so here we go. This will be a little more exciting. I don't know if I've mentioned yet, but another cool thing that the heroes can do is pick up artifacts. Remember they had that back in the old Warlords game. Do you remember that one? I played it a lot on the Amiga. So, your heroes are very valuable assets. You can even give them mounts and rings and weapons. It's, it's really cool. Again, though, the trick is to keep the buggers alive. Now, you see, it even took into consideration where I had those troops positioned, so that, you know, that other army's on that side. If I'd have been a little bit smarter, I could have put those guys in the, you know, totally around to the other side, split up his forces. Now with the siege, I'm going to have to either try to range attack everybody, which won't work very well, because uh, you take all those penalties. Oh, let's start off with a, a fireball! <laughs> Look at that! That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, have a little of that! But uh, anyway, I'm going to have to knock through the gates if I want my melee guys to do anything. And of course, as they're doing that, the computer's going to be on those... Uh, what do you call those things? Uh, oh, damn. <laughs> I, can't, <laughs> I can't remember what those things are called. The, the parapets or battlements? Anyway, whatever you call those little platforms around the, on the wall there, they'll just be raining down arrows and they get some advantages because uh, they have a lot better line of sight. Something to think about if you're if you know somebody's about to attack a city you can build some walls or improve some walls. If you've got walls already you can make stone. You can pretty much resist anything. Of course uh, the computer will find ways around it such as flying troops. It can always cast spells at you. So. You're very seldom going to have a battle where you, you don't have to pay attention. You're just clicking through. I mean, there's always something something that you're risking. Now look at that. <laughs> Could have stayed behind the wall and just uh, dinged me to death with his archers. Instead, he brings his guys outside. Okay. So now I can deal with them properly. Hey, this game is difficult enough. I don't, I'm not really going to make too big a deal about stupid AI decisions. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they factor that into the difficulty. Okay, trying to get these guys close enough where they can avoid that range penalty. Uh, I guess since those guys are in defense mode, it absorbs some damage. Okay, 
trying to... Placement's just critical. Now, this is probably a bad move because they'll be able to attack my archers. It's really bad when melee attacks archers. I'm going to try to avoid that. Let me put some more troops in between them. I don't really want to risk losing my hero because that would be the, the end of everything. I have to start over. Ah, she leveled up. Or he leveled up. Can't quite tell. It's really great when your heroes level up though because they'll get uh, upgrades that affect the whole army that they lead. Not to mention some other cool perks. As you can see there, I think the purple is what I can attack. Some troops can attack portions of the wall. And some of them can only attack the gate. You probably don't want your best troop to be attacking the gate. Because uh, after they crash through it, they'll just be sitting there. Clogging it up. And guess who the enemy is going to be focused on? Ah, the fun. Okay. Yeah, these archers, they... If you position them just right, they can hit those guys inside the walls, but they'll take a lot of penalties. So you probably just did a, a measly three points of damage. Damn, I think Dennis the Menace could have done a better job with a slingshot, but oh well. Okay. Crossbowman. <laughs> One point of damage. Oh, thank you. Oh, that was... I just irritated him. Okay. Go ahead and bring this guy up closer. You know, and the heroes differ too. Some of them are better at melee, and others are better at uh, ranged attacks. Oh, I love these fireballs. That is just awesome. Look at that. Okay, I think these are the last troops I need to weed out. Nope, another unit. What was. Okay, cool. <laughs> I thought, they, thought there for a minute they'd actually conquered that troop. Okay, so maybe... Yeah, there we go. Cool. I was able to take him out with just my archers and save myself the trouble of having to break through that gate. All right, so there you go. That's a good half hour of this. If you want to see the multiplayer, uh, Shane Stax, S. Stax, I'll put a link to his uh, YouTube channel. He's actually been recording... Uh, some multiplayer sessions with yours truly, Nathan Talbert, from uh, our uh, Patreon podcast. So we've been playing this a little bit. I think he's even got one with my brother, <laughs> Luke, <laughs> playing too, so you can hear all, all of our various uh, joys and tribulations playing this on the, the multiplayer mode. But anyway, all in all, I would say this game was good, but not great. Something like a 3 out of 5 drinking horns, if you want to use that scale for for gameplay. Uh, graphics awesome. Music good. Uh, gameplay, I love the depth. I liked all the, the tactics and strategy. Uh, there's just a little, I don't, you know, I, I can't put my finger on it, but the, the AI, especially with auto combat, just feels a little too random. Um, it's very difficult to keep your troops alive, which is a, a big deal because you don't ever get to see their cool level up effects. You know, it'd be nice if you could have a little bit more security going into battles, you know, especially if it tells you that you're very likely to win. Uh, and like I said, that doesn't mean anything. You could still actually lose. So they definitely have some little issues like that to work out. But I love the maps. I love uh, the artifacts. There's all kinds of cool little dungeons to explore here. and uh, You know, there's, there's just a lot to love. I guess that's what makes the little nitpicky stuff stand out so much is that, you know, you play something like this and, you know, you know that if they just had, you know, if it was like 10% better, it would be 100% better. You know, if you know what I mean. Just to, just those little details that if they had addressed, it would uh, it would pump it up to a full 5 out of 5. So, you know, if, maybe they'll fix that stuff in a later patch or maybe they'll have some uh, DLC later on. But all in all, definitely worth playing. If I were you, I would uh, probably wait for the <laughs> Steam sale. Uh, Twenty dollars. This would be a steal. Thirty bucks. Yeah, you know, I guess that's up for you. I would uh, definitely wait for it to come down from forty, though. Uh, so there you have it. Age of Wonders three. Lots of fun. Lots of frustration. But uh, definitely, I want to see more from this from this company. I, I'm really excited by the the possibilities. I'm glad to see somebody finally uh, doing this style of game again in a uh, major fashion. 
Man! That's all for this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I uh, should be back next week, and I've got a fantastic interview lined up uh, for you uh, with Chuck Boucher, a.k.a. Chuckles, the guy responsible for Auto Duel and 2400 AD, one of the pivotal figures at Origin. So a lot of great stuff. I know you will enjoy those uh, interviews very much. As always, I want to thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you uh, very much for your continued support of Matt Chat. Uh, if you haven't supported the show yet, guys, uh, please consider it. Just go to the Patreon site, link in the show notes, and that'll also get you access to a Patreon uh, only, or Patreon supporters only uh, monthly podcast, uh, which I know you will like if you like Matt Chat. So, again, thank you guys who are supporting uh, the show already, and to those who aren't, uh, please consider it. It would really mean a lot to me. Uh, okay, so a couple of news items. Uh, one is uh, John Hare. You may remember him. I interviewed him a few years ago. He's uh, finally released that Word Explorer game he was talking about uh, even back then. I've managed to play it for a couple hours. A lot of fun, kind of casual. It's not something, uh, <laughs> you know, don't, don't expect the next cannon fodder uh, with this, but uh, nevertheless, definitely check it out, especially if you like Word games. Uh, it might be something fun for the kids or for your wife or for yourself if you uh, are okay with something more casual. Uh, Little Killers, uh, the uh, Tales of, of Valyria folks, have just released the second episode. Uh, that makes two now, and they also have an enhanced version of uh, one of those. Uh, so go check that out if you like the Tales of Valyria series. Um, and then finally, uh, David Fox, one of the uh, Lucasfilm Classics designers, has uh, he's, he's had a game out now for a while called uh, Rube Works, based on the Rube Goldberg. Remember he was talking about that back in my interview with him? Well, he's finally got that on Steam, so... You don't need to see any special devices, just uh, follow the link in the show notes and you can play that game. Uh, I definitely enjoy that. I think you will too if you like uh, Rube Goldberg devices or any of the, the incredible crazy machine uh, type games. All right, what about that heel of the week? All right, this week I got something really special. Uh, this is a um, Oma Gang brewery out of Cooperstown, New York. Abbey Ale, it's a double. Ale brewed with licorice root, star anise, uh, sweet orange peel, coriander, and cumin. Sounds more like uh, some kind of pie than, <laughs> than an ale. Uh, rich, fruity, and aromatic Burgundian brew. Clocking in at 8.2% alcohol, so definitely respectable there. Uh, directly influenced by the Benedictines, uh, who seek a more divine union. Apparently pairs well with uh, savory dishes rich cheeses and almost every dessert. Ah, pour slowly so as not to disturb the yeast sediment, but with enough vigor to create a luxurious head and <laughs> release uh, the rich bouquet. Yes, okay. Anyway, uh, there's some more stuff here, but I don't see anything uh, particularly interesting. Uh, anyway, let's get this open and see what it's all about. Hi, yeah, yeah, guys. They weren't kidding around when they said... Uh, Pour slowly. I think I poured it about here and the foam just went all over the studio. Man, it even got on my green screen back there. Whew. What a what a day. <laughs> what a week. Hopefully this will at least taste good enough to justify all the spillage. Uh, if you do get this one, guys, uh, take that warning very seriously. Pour flipping slowly. <laughs> Cannon. I wish I'd have had it all on tape. You guys probably would have got a big kick out of it. Well, it smells pretty good. Not a real strong scent coming off of this. You smell a little bit of the hops, a little bit of the Belgian. Uh, not really smelling any of that uh, cumin and nutmeg and whatever allspice or whatever they had in the on the bottle there. But it doesn't smell bad. Anyway, let's give it a taste. Yeah, I definitely smell that Belgian influence. Um, Quite a bit of hops, uh, not nearly as sweet as you might expect. Um, what am I tasting there? I guess it does kind of have a nice bouquet. Uh, don't really taste any of those seasonings they talked about. Licorice, I'm not tasting that at all. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell what exactly I am tasting. Let me try it again. Uh, kind of a... What is that? Maybe that maybe that's the licorice I'm tasting. Uh, there's kind of a subtlety to it. Um, it tastes a little bit, a little smoky, I guess. Uh, 
Uh, wow, this is just really hard to describe this. Let me try it again. They're kind of a vaguely... Oh, man. <laughs> Dudes, uh, and possibly dudettes, uh, when they tell you to pour this slowly, uh, they, they mean what they say. This thing shot out of here like a cannon all over my flipping studio. I mean, just horrible. I really poured this slowly. Uh, this stuff is volatile. I mean, I'm <laughs> surprised it didn't explode. Anyway, I'm a little bit stopped up at the moment, so... I can't really smell this too well. I'm just not really t smelling anything. I hope that doesn't affect. I hope that's not a sign. It's probably just a sign of my sinuses more than the uh, quality of the aroma here. Uh, I definitely don't smell anything bad. If there is some kind of strong aroma here, I'm definitely not detecting it though. It just smells like maybe a little bit of the hops, a little bit of the uh, Belgian influence. Anyway, let me give it a taste. Hmm. That's very a very good taste. Um, you definitely get the Belgian flavor, a little bit of bitterness, actually quite a bit of bitterness on the ba on the uh, on the aftertaste. Um, going down those sweet, a little bit of those Belgian uh, flavors. Not really tasting any of the licorice or uh, what do they have? <laughs> what else they put in there? Nutmeg and all that cumin. I uh, don't taste that at all. Let me try it again. And you get a little bit of a grape. Uh, taste to it, um, kind of smoky, a, a little almost like a bourbon-like quality to it. Um, not bad. Can't say it's my favorite uh, uh, double by any means. Let me try it one more time. Yeah, definitely a good flavor on this. I, I I'm not knocking it. Um, it is a bit of a thick and bitter uh, flavor. A little bit of sweetness, but you really taste the bitterness on the end, you know going down. Um, if you're okay with bitter and you're okay with making a big mess on the floor, <laughs> uh, then go for this one. I'm going to go maybe four out of five drinking horns on this. It's close to a five out of five. And, you know, I do want to stress that this, you know, I poured it way too quickly. So I don't know what kind of uh, impact that might have had on the flavor. You know, I guess I could try this. Uh, let me try this that I poured earlier. Maybe that it might taste different. You know, it actually... <laughs> it actually, uh, this actually tastes different than the, my horn. Let me try it again. Yeah, so something about, I guess when all that, the head shot out like that, it actually affected the taste. Uh, this is actually a lot better. Kind of a grape nuts like taste. Definitely a lot of grape. Uh, still very bitter, but I'm getting a little bit more of the sweetness uh, from the glass than I did from the horn. Uh, anyway, very strong stuff. Uh, you definitely taste the alcohol either way, and it uh, packs a bit of a punch. I'm still going to go with a 4 out of 5 drinking horns. Uh, just again, if you do decide to try this uh, Abbey Ale Double Ale, uh, by all means, pour slowly. All right. So it's been a bit of a rough week here at Mad Chat. Uh, you know, I won't go into details, but, you know, I was looking for something that would cheer me up a little bit, inspire me. And I found this quotation from Michael Jordan uh, that I thought... Uh, you know, it really kind of, uh, it really spoke to me. And it goes something like this. If you accept the expectations of others, especially negative ones, then you will never change the outcome. See you guys next week. Oh, I noticed this bottle has one of these fun little cannon, cannon poppers. All right, here we go. Let's see if I can hit it right on my camera. <laughs> my real, whoa! Ah! Now that was a premature ejaculation.